welcome to St. Peter's Amy Church. My name is Ajni Bhagani. I'm the current lay president of St. Peter's. And we are glad to have you here today as we enjoy and celebrate this special day. This day to be in happy and fortunate to be thankful for all of you, the laity. And on this note, we will hear a song from some of our laity, the St. Peter's AME Band. Take it away. Thank you. 
Amen. I want to thank all of you for coming out today. And I want a special thanks to presiding elder, former presiding elder and first lady. Thank you for coming. We are blessed to have you, Reverend Ref. And on that note, it's time to start our call to worship. Please stand. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the forest of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. And a joyful noise we will sing. As you notice, our choir may not be behind us, but our choir is in front of us. Amen. We will be singing from the hymnal, 582, the lay song. We will see, don't worry, the first and the last verse. We don't have to go through them all. <laughs> 582. The late song. The first and the last verse. Be inclusive, God, that you would bow your heads, close your eyes as we go to our Father in prayer. Oh God, our Father, we thank you for watching over us as we slept and slumbered last night. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see a brand new day that we've never seen before. Oh God, we thank you for your incredible sacrifice of your son, Jesus the Christ, who bled and died on the cross for us, that we might have the right to the tree of life. Oh God, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning and God providing food for us on our table, for clothing God, for shoes, for shelter over our head, God. God, we thank you that you are so gracious that you keep on blessing us, God, over and over and over again. Oh, God, we thank you for always being with us, God, always being by our side. 
no matter what we're going through, no matter what the storm is, either we're going through a storm, we're just coming out of a storm, but God, what we know is that your word says that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And God, we are so grateful. God, we gladly surrender our lives, God, to you, God, that we give you all the honor and the glory because you're just so worthy to be praised. God, for those who are sick, we ask you in advance to send your healing powers, God. God, for those who are grieving loved ones, God, we ask you to send your comfort and your peace. Oh God, we invite your Holy Spirit into this holy place. God, we come, we ask him to dwell in our hearts, in our minds, that he would equip us, challenge us, comfort us, and teach us, God, inspire us as we learn more about your word and your ways. Oh Father, we ask that you be with our speaker today, God as she comes to bring us words of encouragement and, and wisdom, God, at this, our annual lay day service. Oh God, forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for what you are in our lives, for all that you do and for all that you've done, God. God, we thank you, ask you to forgive us of our sins, God, that we would turn away from them, God, that we would not continue to repeat the same things over and over again. Oh, God, help us to set our minds and our hearts on you. Renew our spirits. Lift us up with your peace and your joy and your love. We love you, Lord. We need you. We give you praise and we give you thanks. For you alone are worthy. These things I ask in your precious Son, Jesus of Christ's name. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. St. Peter's, it is indeed a good day. It's Minnesota, it is the month of March, and the sun is out, and we can feel its warmth. Our Old Testament readings today come from the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 14. Once again, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol and as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to, is it too little for you weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Good morning, St. Peter's. Good to see all of you out today, and it's good to be seen. <laughs> Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 4 through 10. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, 
when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it is written to me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So may God add a blessing to the people of God and the word. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning. I come to you with our announcements. Um, April 7th, 2023, our Good Friday service would be online, um, and the link will be on our church's website. All right, and today we're here to celebrate Lay Day, and we have a few announcements. All right, calendar of events. Uh, March 28th, Tuesday, the end of month reports are due. Saturday, April 1st, is our official board meeting at 11 a.m. Um, Sunday, April 2nd, will be Palm Sunday. Um, and then we'll have April 6th will be our steward board meeting. Every week at noon and 7 p.m., we have our Bible study class, and our links are on our website as well as in our bulletin. All right. And I just have a side announcement that I wanted to say a special happy belated birthday to a very dear young lady, Miss Adaya, who's transitioning to young womanhood. She turned 18, and I love her to pieces. I want to say happy birthday. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to take some time to welcome our visitors. So if this is your first time to St. Peter's, please stand and state your name. Hello. Oh, they're bringing a mic to you, Miss Gale. Hi, good morning. My name is Gail Dodd. All right, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. And just know everyone is welcome here at St. Peter's, and we're glad that you decided to join us today. And we know that you're here with our friend, Miss Sheila. All right, and right now we're going to be led into worship again with our St. Peter's trio. Quat, quat. Quattro, I'm sorry. Quartet, Quartet. thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. Man, I need to go to your show. Woo! Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to again thank you for everybody for coming out today. You could have been anywhere, but you decided to come here on this special occasion. We want to thank you for all of you have done. But not just today. Yesterday we had a good time as well for those who could make it. Yes, one of the things about the lay is that we have to teach. And we had a workshop. We did less complaining and more explaining. People had questions. They wanted to know what this is about in my hand. Call it a discipline. And what can you do to make it a little better, to make it work for you? We proposed legislation for a 2024 general conference, and we went over it about what the 4th District, that's what we're in, proposed. And it was presented by our Director of Lay Activities, the DOLA, Gloria Jeff. She did a wonderful job. Give her a hand. And for those who wanted to come, we want to thank you for giving us your prayers for a successful event. Now the question is, what is the lay organization and why would you want to join the lay organization? I mean, the purpose of the lay organization is to organize and train the lay members of the AME Church so that each member may utilize and maximize their abilities, skills granted by God in assisting the improvement and extension of God's kingdom. And create happiness peace and harmony. It sounds wonderful because it's true. And why join? I mean, you have to instill the membership of the church with love and appreciation for the history, the traditions, and the AME principles of African Methodism. We are the structure and also to keep forever the memories of Richard Allen, the founder. We advocate respect and loyalty to authority and leadership. And we encourage the lady to support the total program of the church, the local level, the district level, the conference level, and the connectional, because we are a connected church. It's not a church that goes alone. It's a church that is connected to other churches. Because the stronger we are together, the more effective we are. Not just here, but in the community. So I wish to tell you a little story about that. This church in 1888 had a site at the 22nd Street and Washington Avenue. It was called St. Peter's Amy Church. It prospered. It was doing well in 1893, and then it burned down. The structure was being rebuilt, and those laity and the pastor had to find another site to temporary use for the community, and they did. They had the Sunday forms, Missionary Society, the Helping Hand, and the Willing Workers. And then another pastor took over, Stovall. In 1914, with his leadership, they had a parsonage. They had a Sunday school revised. And then eventually, he became the presiding elder of St. Paul District. And then this man named Reverend Martin Luther Simmons Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> After the second disaster, because it burned down again, was able to keep the laity functioning and have another church built on the 41st and 4th Avenue at this building we are in today. Amen. And through the help with uh, committees, ran by Mr. Lonnie Leverett and Lowe Zachary and Bill Fraction and Jay Tyson, they were able to build and keep this church going forward. Now, it's amazing, all of that. Now, you would say, well, maybe the pastor did everything. Well, I don't know. The pastor is not a construction worker, but they're the best cheerleader you have. It required many hands, talents, treasures, and the participation. And now, I could stop there, but I'm going to go a little longer, so forgive me. 
We also had something in this church. We had the Cantino Choir, the church orchestra, the fashion show, the Friday night game night for the kids so the parents could get some rest, the AME Twin City picnics when we had St. James and Wayman and St. Paul and Lily of the Valley all gathering together. We had a Twin City bowling gathering. We still have the trophy before COVID, so we're holding on to it still. Uh, we had the bake sales and the angel trees, the ugly sweater days, and the blood donut trucks outside for the community. Feeding my starving children, men's day barbecue, and the young people's division and the young adult network, Grant Williams Missionary Society. We had a long time church community daycare that lasted for the longest of time. We had the men who cook, talent shows, Nachita Herrera concert, jazz in the hall, cabaret, revival, church retreats, dance events, freestyle, spoken word, and children-led service. We even had an 8 o'clock and a 10 o'clock service. AME basketball term participation, Olympics, Sunday school, Bible studies, Easter children performance, Sankofa village getting ready for that garden to feed the people in a desert, a city desert. We also had a brick fundraiser. We wanted to honor all the families that put so much time into this church. We had a backpack giveaway, boxes of love and turkey donations, socks and clothes donations, signs of encouragement, chili bowl, crock pot, you say we had it. We also have a Twin Cities Fellowship Church breakfast with all the different denominations around the city, with all the men. Movie night, Ash Wednesday, Zumba class, and now we have a hybrid service. Uh, we want to thank all of those. And of course, we had to get back down to business. We had a church conferences, district planning, and official board meeting. And all this was possible because of you because you participated in those events. Now, if I said those and I, you know, right back down memory lane, many Ripperton, um, they don't have to always be memories. Some of them can be now or in the future. It's up to the laity to decide where we wanna go. If the church was a hospital, we'd be the doctors and the nurses. Um, trying to maintain it through thick and thin, trying to keep it recovery, and then we'd have the managers uh, the, in, in the upper management, the presiding elder, and so on and so on. And, and for some, they've been doctors for so long that they're just trying to retire, and they need somebody to take over for them. And for others, they've been nurses, and they want to be doctors, but they need to be lifted up and given a helping hand. And so in that end, we are trying to work as a body and we're trying to make this church move as a body so the right hand does the right thing and the left hand does the left. And do that, it requires cooperation. And so the lay organization is here to Amen. give you that instruction so you know what to do to become a doctor or a nurse in order to fill in those gaps we need. Because some folks uh, may want to move to a different position. Yeah. Some people may want to take a step back because they have too much on their plate. And for so, we have some people in the pews sitting back, some people online who are giving and giving and supporting, giving us the tools. And you know, we're, some people are using the same tools and we need upgraded tools and different tools to do the same operation. We wanna thank you, support for getting in there. But we also would like to see that first step or that second step moving forward. You know, as much, I've seen a number of pastors coming down, the management come down, they have a new slogan, they say, move forward, keep going. Well, let's do it. And we want to thank all of you for coming here, and we want to thank you for being a part of St. Peter's Amy Church. Amen. Amen. I need to follow my own stuff here. <laughs> Worship and giving. Well, well, you can give any way you want. You can, we can give after church. There's a basket to my left. Uh, check, cash. However, we also do it online. We have Give La Fly on thesaintpeters.org. And... 
we're not giving it just because we have to, just because it's the tradition or 10%. We're doing it because we care and we love that we have a giving heart, you know. And we want to thank you. We can do $25 above your tithes and offering to support the lay organization and also just to support the church because we have many laity that are doing ministries to help others, whether they want to help the homeless, whether they want to help the community, or the way they just want to help the folks in this church. So we want to thank you um, for everything you continue to do and your support. Thank you online. Whether you used to be here but you can't come here physically and you're out there in Atlanta, Georgia, or in California, we want to thank you so much for all your support because we know that we may not see you, but we know and we can feel your presence and your love and your support. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Amen, church. Good morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Tracy Gibson, and I have the honor and pleasure to just sit today, amen, and not have to do much. So I want to thank the lay, first of all, amen, 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 amen. I want to thank them for their hard work and for their support. We're in collaboration one with another, and it's now time for us to pray, church. Anybody in the house need prayer? Uh, we should have been jumping up and shouting because everybody needs prayer. I don't care how good it's going. I don't care how bad it's going. We all need prayer. We all need to seek our Father in heaven. We need to just have a little talk with Jesus. We need to just go to him with whatever we need to go to him with. And we don't have to go through a priest or anybody else. We got a one-on-one -on -one relationship to our Father in heaven. So church, it's praying time. For those of you online, you may pause and have your prayer. For those of you in the sanctuary, the altar of God is open before you, or you may stay in your seats and have your prayer. Whatever you want to do, it is on you. But it's praying time, church. Let us pray.
Father, we ask that you hear our prayers, hear our cries, gather and hold and provide for those in Mississippi because of the tornadoes that have gone through. Bless and touch those because there were a few more school shootings that happened that didn't make the news, the national news, Lord, but it's somebody that's homeless, Lord, that don't know where they might lay their heads tonight. There is someone who may not have a meal to eat. There is someone in a hospital or in a nursing home or in prison, Father. We just know that you are an untimed God and you can be wherever they are. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you hear our prayers, that you hear our calls, and that you hear our cries, O oh Lord. Hear, Father and allow your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the church say, amen. Good morning, St. Peter's. Good morning. It's good to be in the church of the in the in the house of the Lord for real. I've been watching online mainly, so it feels really good today to be here. Uh, first of all, let me uh, just first thank uh, AJ and the Lake Lay organization for uh, reaching out to me and inviting me to uh, be a part of this program today. So AJ, thank you, and to Pastor Tracy and uh, uh, for all their encouragement and making sure that I stick uh, with the script. Our keynote speaker said to me, be it Bill, we were talking the other day, she said, be brief, please be brief. I said, there's so much I need to say about you because, uh, and you have uh, words on the back of your bulletin that kind of gives a, a high level description of what she's done, but it doesn't really capture the spirit of what this person is all about, so. I'm going to just, I will be brief, but I want to make sure that I share just a few things uh, with our keynote speaker this morning, the Sharon Sales Belton, I should say, and uh, make sure that we all leave here today understanding why she came to be with us today and, um, and what she will continue to do uh, because she's not done with her work. Sharon Sales Belton, 45th mayor of Minneapolis. You hear me? 45th mayor of Minneapolis. Uh, Sharon so, uh, served as the mayor from uh, 1994 through 2001, uh, but most notably, she's an American community leader. She's a politician and an activist. Currently, uh, Sharon is uh, serving as the Vice President of Community Relations and Government Affairs for the Thomson Reuters organization, the legal uh, business in Egan. She served as mayor for Minneapolis, as I mentioned, from 1994 to 2001, and she was the first African-American and the first woman to hold that position. However, their uh, early, early beginnings, um, Sharon, I found out, is actually from St. Paul, where she was one of four daughters, and uh, then lived in uh, Richfield, and she became the only African-American in East Junior High School later moved to South Minneapolis and attended Central High School. She volunteered as a uh, candy striper at Mount Zion um, Baptist, I mean hospital, and later worked as a nurse's aide, where she, she briefly um, served as civil rights activist uh, in the state of Mississippi. So her beginnings in activation started as a youth, and uh, it wasn't something that she waited until she became an adult to get involved. She attended, Sharon attended um, McAllister College, and she studied biology and sociology. Later became a parole officer. Yeah, it, gets, it gets even better. With victims of sexual assault and um, became a neighborhood activist. Part of her career, uh, she was elected to the, e uh, the eighth ward of the Minneapolis uh, City Council, and also represented uh, the uh, Minnesota at the 1984 Democratic National Convention. And uh, Walter Mondale, who we remember that name, uh, was um, uh, nominated as president. 
Sharon was a member of the Minnesota Democratic Farmer Labor Party and was elected to the city council in, in uh, 19, 1990. In 1993, she announced her candidacy uh, to, for the mayor role and was elected to that position. Sharon was elected, um, was then elected in 1997 and held the position for two terms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean 1997. She held two terms after being elected. Uh, she was responsible in stabilizing. Here's, here's what gets really interesting, too. You heard a little bit about her early beginnings, <clears throat> but her focus was really about stabilizing neighborhoods amid a lot of racial tensions, and she supported the public school district. After leaving the mayor's office, she didn't stop. She became a senior fellow at the Roy Wilkins Center for Human Relations and Social Justice, part of the, part of the um, uh, platform she, that she continues to work on. Uh, Sharon worked um, in different variety and a number of different places, and I'll shorten that up. She's married to uh, Steve Belton, an attorney, and I've met Steve. And previously, uh, when we first moved to Minneapolis, I think Sharon and Steve were probably two of the first people that we met. She's involved in a lot of different associations. I'm not going to go through the full list. She's received numerous awards and recognitions, but I think that um, it's, it's best to hear her words from her mouth about the work that she's doing, the, her purpose in being here today. And so with that, I'm going to be brief. Sharon, sure. I'll be brief. Uh, so before you hear um, uh, words from Sharon, you're going to hear the melodious voice of our dear brother, Valton Henderson. And Valton, so I'll leave it to you. But thank you. basis for this song is Psalm 34. When you have an opportunity to take a look at it, some of the words that you'll hear are embedded in that language. So. Taste and see, taste and see. The goodness of the Lord, oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, hey. 
goodness of the Lord taste and see you gotta taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Wonderful song to follow. That's, yes, taste and see. I love it. I might have to download that on my phone. <laughs> on my way home yeah. from Chicks. I'm going to do it today. Yes, exactly. Uh, to the Reverend Dr. Tracy Gibson, thank you for be, inviting me to be a part of uh, today's lay celebration. And thank you, Bill, for the warm introduction and for keeping it short. <laughs> Uh, that was really good. I, I can't tell you just how delighted I am to be here this morning at AME, at St. Peter's AME. Just to walk into the uh, church this morning and just to see so many familiar faces. And these are, this is like coming home. And then the special treat to see my good friend, Reverend Riff, right here in the front row. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. It just. It feels wonderful. Please, this, my, my applause to you for your extraordinary service to Wayman. Oh, thank you. You know, um, as was said, I, uh, I grew up uh, in St. Paul and in, in Minneapolis. But when I was in high school, I was actually coming here to uh, St. Peter's AME Church. And I remember sitting in the fourth row from the back on the left side of the sanctuary uh, with all my friends. And then if I was late, if I was late, I was in the first row in the vestibule. You know, because again, um, you had to get here on time to get a seat. All right, we had to get here on time to get a seat. All of those wonderful things that we heard about the work of the lay uh, committee and individuals who are part of it, it got us in the seats. And we were here, all of us, even the kids. So it's good to be back. I want to just move, if I could, uh, to um, the topic of uh, my 
conversation with you uh, today. It's a conversation. The theme for the Lay Day service is your purpose is your blessing. All right. Now, the scripture that was assigned to me, because they did tell me what I needed to do, uh, is a basis for the message, and it comes from Hebrews 6.10. Now, if you brought your Bibles with you, I'd like you to open up your Bibles to Hebrews 6.10. If you've got a Bible app, you know, on your phone, you can open up that too. And just read along with me. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Now, I'd like to just to take a moment to just reflect on on these words and share with you that we are servant leaders, all of us who are followers of Christ's disciples. We claim boldly through our presence, through our prayers and our praises that we love the Lord and are committed to do the Lord's will on earth, God's will. We heard that earlier this morning. Not my will, not your will, but the Lord's will. And Jesus asked us to love our neighbors. He asked us to feed the hungry, to look after the children, the widow, the meek, the poor, the addicted, and the afflicted. Yeah. The Lord calls upon us as disciples to build his kingdom on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And my question this morning, St. Peter's, is are we caring for our brothers and our sisters? Well. Do we really believe that it is our responsibility to support and aid our neighbor? Mm. Do we really believe that? Mm. Now, maybe if I asked you this question on Friday night, or maybe last night, or any time you weren't sitting here in the church, you might have responded a little bit differently to that question. Now, some people would say, I got no responsibility for my neighbor. I got enough problems of my own. Well, okay, let's be truthful. Others might have said, well, he made his bed. He got to sleep in it. Okay, you all have heard that before, I know. And if you're really, really, really being cynical, you might have just said, no good deed goes unpunished. Okay, we have all heard these things. If any of those answers, if any of those were your answers, all I can do is shake my head this morning and say, you need Jesus. Okay, you need Jesus. Because Jesus was very clear about our responsibility for our neighbor. And he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, to me, this means my neighbor's problems are my problems. It means that I need to help my neighbor make her bed so that we can both get a good night's sleep. And if my good deed is punished by man, tell you what, I know it'll be rewarded by God. I know that. Can somebody say amen, please? Okay, there you go. Now that brings us to the text which, uh, which speaks to God's character of justice and promises that the acts of justice that we exercise will not escape God's notice, okay? Now let me see if I can make a connection between our scripture and today's theme, which argues that your purpose is indeed your blessing. Now, I would just note that we're nearing the end of Women's History Month, and in honor of that observation, I want to highlight some women in the Bible to help me make my case. Is that all right with you? Okay. All right, now before I do that, I want to just to take a moment to acknowledge, to acknowledge that there is so much pain and suffering in the world, and in our community, and in the neighborhoods that surround us. People living in this immediate neighborhood, and probably all over the city, are still feeling the trauma from the murder of George Floyd, which just happened just nine blocks away from this corner. Nine blocks away from this corner. I feel, I feel that trauma too. You know, there were times when I would 
purposely avoid the intersection of 38th and Chicago just out of angst and out of anger, and maybe even some fear. Now, there were other times that I would go out of my way to drive through the intersection, to just drive through it to, as an act to reclaim, restore, yeah. and help to rebuild my neighborhood. Yeah. I'm looking for opportunities to shop in the stores in our neighborhood, eat in the restaurants in the neighborhood, support our black led agencies that serve our community, volunteer for causes to help our community, especially for me, women and children. All right. All right. Following my heart, I'm giving of my time, my talent, and my treasure to the community. It's a lesson that I learned early in my life growing up in my home in St. Paul, again in Minneapolis, and also in church. These are the lessons that we learn in church, supported, you know, foundationally by what we're learning in our home. Now, let me transition in this talk a little bit about the real message for this moment, this morning. And I want to go back to the stories of the women in the Bible. Now, the women of the Bible were no strangers to trauma and struggle. Now, I'm sure you all know the story of Naomi and Ruth yes. from yes. the book of Ruth in the New Testament. Now I'm going to offer a quick summary. And so you want to hear again the, the whole story, you got to go back to the book of Ruth. So here's a quick summary. Naomi lost her husband, her sons, and her homeland. Her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, lived with her after the deaths of their husbands. They supported and comforted each other through the loss. Naomi felt, she felt like all hope had been lost. She'd lost everything. She used to cite over and over again, I'm old and I'm never going to find happiness again. That's what she thought. That's what she thought. She instructed her daughters-in-law to leave her. Just leave. Go find some husbands and go get a better life. Just leave me. Nothing good is going to happen for me. Well, Oba left. But Ruth, Ruth refused to leave, declaring that she would not leave Naomi. She would go wherever Naomi went, and Naomi's people would be her people, and Naomi's God would be Ruth's God. A beautiful testimony, just yeah. a beautiful testimony. Yeah. Now, these words might be familiar to you as they're often cited during weddings and commitment ceremonies. I remember that they were a part of Stephen and uh, our uh, wedding ceremony. Ruth's work words are powerful testament to unity and enduring love. But guess what? That's not the end of the story. Naomi and Ruth returned to Naomi's homeland, where despite Naomi's conviction that nothing good would come, they were both blessed beyond their imaginings. Yeah. Both yeah. blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth continued to look after Naomi. She found work in the fields. Ruth, who was an immigrant in this land, was now welcomed by the community of Naomi's kin, who supported her and watched out for her and one another. Now, the truth of the matter is God did remember Ruth's good works and rewarded her handsomely. Ruth was faithful, loving, and obedient to Naomi. She sacrificed her time, her talent, her treasures to support her mother-in-law. Ruth did not allow Naomi's negative narrative to discourage her determination and her hope. Come on now. Her purpose was her blessing. Yes. Now, I'm not a preacher, but that was a good shout out there. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell you that I believe that I believe that we need more Ruths yeah. in church today. Yeah. Yeah. We need more Ruths in our community today. Men and women so dedicated to family that they will cross borders to chase after their loved ones. 
contemporary rules whose purpose is to preserve and protect family, even when they are not necessarily related by blood. Rus can be cross-cultural, intergenerational servants. Yeah. Rus, both men and women, who are willing to make their God, the God of Naomi, is the God, and who is the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to get back to the question that I raised earlier, because I want to keep it top of mind. Are we caring for our brothers and sisters? Yeah. Are we looking out for our neighbors? Are there hurting and hungry children in your line of sight? I know they're in mine. Do we need more places, safe places, mm -hmm. in our community for our children to learn, to play, and to have fun? Yes, yes. The pastor cited earlier this morning that there were more sh shootings in our schools. We're sending our children to school to learn, not to duck lives and guns what's go what's going on in our community and what are we doing about it are there safe and affordable housing units available yeah. what about groceries yes there's still a food desert mm -hmm. there's still a food desert in our own community in our own neighborhoods where is our access to goods and services that we need for our life i ask the question are we caring for our brothers and sisters are we caring for our neighborhoods you know, I just thought I would share just a quick story if I could. Um, I had a really good friend who was also a longtime member of this church. Some of you will remember her. Her name was Chlorestine Wilson. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. Shout out for Chlorestine. Well, Chlorestine helped the city start a wonderful program that was called Kids Cafe. It was an after-school program where these guest chefs and other people who had culinary skills, like many of you, volunteered to teach our children how to cook a meal, mm -hmm. and then also to provide them with some homework assistance, right? The kinds of things that happen when kids come home from school every day, but not everybody comes home to a, to a, a meal, to dinner, and to somebody who can help them with their education. Now, I mentioned this experience or this example because in that instance, we were tapping into the skills and the talents of our own community to help our community. Yeah. Neighbors helping neighbors. Truth of the matter is that we know what needs to be done. Question is, why aren't we doing it? Well, well. Okay, we'll set that aside for a moment and just tell you that I know that there are some folks I know there's some folks among us that claim that they have paid their dues. Yeah. Okay, okay. I got no more to give. I've paid my dues. Well, I just want to tell you that kingdom building dues are never paid up. Okay? They are never paid up. We are never too young, never too old, never too broken to be a part of service in God's kingdom, okay? Just, it's just, it's, it's not so. Now, I wanna just share one more Bible story to amplify my case, so I'm gonna get back to my case. Okay, and then after I do that, then Pastor, I'll sit down, okay? Now, I wanna go to the story of Sarah, whose husband was Abraham. You all know that story? Yeah. If you don't know the story, then you gotta to go to the book of Genesis and you go read it. It's the whole story. I'm not going to tell the whole story. I'm just going to tell a part of the story, right? Okay, Sarah was blessed with beauty, strong will, intelligence, and an obedient spirit. She sacrificed herself to her husband's ego to save him from perceived assailants and from the wrath of the Pharaoh when they were immigrants in Egypt. Also, unable to have a child, Sarah set aside her pride and proposed that her husband, Abraham, have a child with her maid, Haggai, a form of surrogacy back in uh, the old biblical era. When Hagar became pregnant, she felt and acted like she was superior to Sarah, which made Sarah mad. Mm -hmm. 
You can imagine why she might be feeling a little bit salty about that. <laughs> well, Sarah, just thinking about it in reflection, Sarah's sacrifice benefited others, but there was no immediate reward for her. Well, and she didn't like that either. Sarah really felt like she was running out of time. Yeah. Okay, fast forward, 13 years later, Sarah overheard an angel of the Lord telling Abraham that Sarah, at age 90, would bear Abraham a son. Yeah, the okay, the well you know she was skeptical, okay? Abraham, just remember, was 99, so mm, okay, she's skeptical. So it says in the Bible that Sarah heard all this and she laughed. She laughed. This is, cannot be true. This cannot, I cannot be blessed in this way. She didn't believe what she heard, and she likely doubted that her works were known and valued by God. This cannot happen. But guess what? God knew what was on her mind, he knows what's on our mind, yeah. and he knows what's in our heart yep. all the time. God's promise in Genesis 17 to make Abraham the ancestor of a multitude of nations was fulfilled when, guess what? Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Yeah. Hallelujah, okay? Now, now, there's really a lot to unpack in the story of, of, of Sarah. But, and I, and I, don't, I don't have time to do all of that. But I do want to focus on the purpose this morning and to, and to just talk about that. Sarah's actions throughout her life centered around her singular purpose as a wife and as a partner to Abraham. She did whatever was necessary to preserve and to promote her family, looking past herself to a higher purpose. I'm going to tell you, I think we need more Sarahs yes, in the church yes. today. Yes, okay? Yes. More men and women who have a sense of purpose beyond their own self-interest. Yes. People who are willing to set aside their ego or their pride or whatever it is to advance the good of their families, the good of their neighbors, and the good of the community. We need our Sarahs to use their intellect to advance our shared purpose to build God's kingdom here and now. And, and listen to this. Even if you're not called to be a Sarah, all of us know a Sarah. And our purpose might just be to encourage the Sarah we know who has endured shame, humiliation, yeah. heartbreak, Help. failure, Help. and perhaps give her or him hope and remind them of God's word in Isaiah 40 and 31. You know what it says? It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings and they will run and not be weary and they will walk and not grow faint. Okay? What is our higher calling, church? What is our purpose? Now, I believe God guides our purpose by planting dreams in our hearts. And on this week or during this week, let us all take a moment to think about the dreams and the hopes that we have for our community, for our neighbors, or our family. Yeah. And let's ask ourselves if we've been too busy, mm. too afraid, yeah. well, too disappointed, too often to our own self, yeah. kind of called self-absorbed, to offer a helping hand. Now I'm gonna do this myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, so I want you to do it with me. But this week, just take some time aside and do that. Take out a piece of paper and a pencil and write it down. Yeah. Write it down. Make a commitment. Sometimes when we get it out of our head and put it on a piece of paper, it's more meaningful. Yeah. So let's take some action here. When we serve others, saints, 
especially the least and the lost and the left behind, we are serving God. Let's stop talking about what needs to be done and let's start doing something to get it done. Okay? Today might just be the good day to reach out to the sick and the shut in, the distressed and the lonely, the widowed and the orphaned, the elderly and the disabled, the friend and the stranger. Today might be a good day. I think it is. Let's declare it a good day to affirm our commitment to follow the commandments of Christ to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Okay? God is not unjust. He will not forget your works and the love that you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. As disciples of Christ, we faithfully and joyfully serve because Jesus sacrificed everything for us. You know, we may serve in expectation of blessing, but not in exchange for blessing. Okay? Let me say that again. We serve in expectation of blessing, but not in exchange. Guess what? We are already we have already been rewarded by Jesus' finished work on the cross. And I don't know about you, but if Christ never does another thing for me, I am satisfied with his gift of salvation. Okay? Okay? Now, during this season of Lent, and on this lay day, let us recommit ourselves to Christ's ministry to serve those who languish and suffer in the margins. Let us look to our neighbor's kin as Christ has commanded us. Let us care for our elders and our in-laws like Ruth did. And like Sarah, like Sarah, let's set aside our pride and do what is best for the greater good. Saints here at St. Peter's AME Church, your purpose is your blessing. Your purpose is your blessing. Believe that. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Did you hear what we just heard? Yes. <laughs> Are you caring for your sisters and brothers? Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> She said we need to reclaim, restore, and rebuild. She said we need to reconnect ourselves. Amen. When you hear the negative narrative, what you going to do now? Because we can't let it discourage us. We need to keep going. We need more roofs in the church, in our community, in our lives. We need more Sarahs in our community, in our church, and in our lives. In order to be a part of God's kingdom, y'all, we need to know our purpose. (laughs) We need to know our blessings. (laughs) And we need to recommit to the higher calling that God is calling us to. I don't know about you, but I was blessed with this word this morning. I want to give God the praise. I want to lift up God this morning and glorify God and There might be someone here today who needs to recommit, restore. If so, the doors of the church are open to you this morning as we stand for the invitation of Christian discipleship. One of the most important times in the service where you may reconnect and recommit yourself to the Father who sits up high and looks down low. Is there one today? If you're online, you can put it in the chat. If you're online, you can just say, I need prayer, and leave us a phone number, and we will call and connect with you. Is there one today? 
that would like to surrender all to God? Is there one today that would like to reconnect and recommit? Is there one today that wants to take their service to another level? Is there one? Is there one? Hearing none. We want to thank God for our service today that glorified him. We want to thank God for our speaker this morning who lifted up high and reminded us of who we are. Reverend and Mrs. Ref, we're glad to have you worshiping with us today. And as we get ready to close out this lay day service, we want to thank you, all of the laity of this church, for your work, for your support, for your collaboration. And we want to ask God to continue to bless and connect us with cords that cannot be broken as we unite with one another. Our benediction today is on page 58652, the lay benediction. The lay benediction, you have a piece of paper with it on it in your bulletin. Amen. The lay benediction, let us stand. and have a wonderful rest of the week. Go downstairs and fellowship one with another with a couple of snacks. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for worshiping at St. Peter's AME Church this morning.